Hey you folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to Let's Drunk the Beginner's Guide! So it's uh, late at night, and I normally wouldn't be recording at this time, but I got quite a few tweets and emails uh, requesting that I give the Beginner's Guide a try. And I was like, what's the Beginner's Guide? I apparently missed this in the news. Beginner's Guide is a narrative video game from Davey Redden, the creator of the Stanley Parable. It lasts about an hour and a half and has no traditional mechanics, no goals or objectives. Instead, it tells the story of a person struggling to deal with something they do not understand. I was like, you know what? Let, let's do it! It's not uh, typical for the channel, but uh, let's do it. Let's get the camera up and everything and see how it goes. I've done nothing. I know nothing about this game. I've got no spoilers, no information other than reading that, buying it on Steam, and uh, justifying the video to be borderless and this to be configured for headphones hopefully the sound levels are good let's start see what how it goes cheers yeah i know there's ice cubes in there just because i'm too lazy to uh to do it right so the more i drink my martini the more watered down it gets controls wsd click gotcha hi there hey thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide my name is Davey Reedon, I wrote Reedon. The Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Okay. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together, is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Well, they did say it was a different kind of experience. Alright, I got a gun. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Security call breached. Hostile alien life form inbound. 
I played enough AVP to be it properly. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned oh. mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin to shoot it after I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> nice lighting, actually. I like that. The floor lighting. I tried to do that once in a game. Apparently, oh. the space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? I'm digging this. It's got an interesting vibe. I mean, I don't, I don't believe that this is actually about his friend's games, necessarily. I think that's just, you know, sort of the story, the narrative, and that's okay. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's cool, actually. Oh, I like that. I should do this in a game. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all like of the this. hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. I can't move. Oh, there we go. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. <laughs> oh. Literally, I can't strafe. I can't do anything. Just turn and go backwards. It's very disorienting. Oh, wait. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Ah, oh, this is lovely. The future is always behind her. How will she find the strength to confront it? It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one.
feel like I've played this on the Oculus Rift. It was very creepy. Oh, I can't get off the path. That's it. All right. You're now entering. What if I go the other way? Oh, all right, dead end. All right. You are now entering. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Ooh, I like the sense of height I here. wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? I love the sense of this. The, the sound, the wind. See, I wish I could be creative like this when I do my Let Him Dare games. There's technically nothing difficult about this. It just requires just a lot of creativity, and I hope the stairs don't break. Oh my, it's being... Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. The wall, the wall is destroyed, you're given a medal. A to... room that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Key and one game less during a separate game. Okay. Koda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. I want to keep reading them. I mean, I guess I'm denying you guys the experience of playing this game yourself. This little texture thing here. I'm sure that's intentional. Sorry I'm not talking much. This is, um... I don't know. This is a heck of an interesting experience. And then I won't be able to get back up here. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Mm -hmm. It's dark, and ooh, there's like black hazy stuff going on here. How far does this go? That far. And that far. Okay. Oh, I can jump. Alright, that's... Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. Similar setup. I like the sound. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Right. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. What the? How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. 
I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing, or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? It's an interesting point, because there's a lot of games, especially RPGs and stuff, that might have all these like Easter eggs and stuff that you're never aware of, until you sort of read, you know, the complete fact or walk through online or, um, you know, you go into the forums or whatever and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I missed all these crazy side quests. I don't know. You are now exiting. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Great and lovely descent. Oh, this is gorgeous. And that's done, that's mostly a result of uh, light mapping and um, um, ambient occlusion and stuff like that, I think, that makes this so lovely. Baked in. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Mm -hmm. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Check the bathroom, though. Nothing. Ooh, this is interesting architecture. All right. Whoa! It's like playing Rainbow Road. <gasps> oh, butt clenching. So much butt clenching. I mean, this doesn't feel like big boxy corridors. Butt clenching. Oh. All right, all right. I don't even know if this is the, you know what I'm supposed to do, and what does that mean in a game? What you're supposed to do. Most of what I'm trying to do, usually in games, is trying to figure out what the game developers intended me to do. Not necessarily experience the game in and of itself. So I don't tend to discover all the cool Easter eggs myself. I don't do like, well, what if I try this instead? Can I jump over there? What happens if I just fall down? What would that do? What if I... Ah, alright. There was a cool blurring effect as I uh, fell. Did you notice? Okay, let's just go all the way down. Woo! Alright, no falling damage. That's a cool blur. There's a wall there. I, like, you can see just a bit of an edge there, right? And I was like, what's going on there? But yeah, there's an actual wall stopping me from going through. There's a giant cylinder here. All 
I see how the light is offset, giving you the sense of uh, like an actual sunlight coming down that way. It's not just a big lamp, which would have been easy to do. It's like a cat. I'm stuck in now. It's very, yeah. Straight corridors. Ow! Whoa, what? Okay. Oh, I should have tried to get off there. Instead of ridden it to the top. I wonder what that would have done. Can I? Oh, I can't get off. Alright. And then I'm in this my cell. Prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yeah. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. I wonder about the name, Coda. Because Coda in music is a pause, isn't it? I might be thinking of something wrong, I'm not sure. Um, oh. Oh, okay. There's an actual bit there to show that there's a floor. Alright. That was just an invisible barrier, but I guess not. This is all under that restaurant, a streetwise fool. It's the puzzle again with the exact same solution as the last time. If you say so. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. You there, did you come from Here, up above? Coda begins using a what kind was up of dialogue there? system that he oh. fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Three. Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. Again, perfect. Now, please, tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. Um... Trust me, you don't want to go over there. Be, there's a giant prison. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Don't you understand? It's the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there's nothing I want more. Well, the problem is we can't get the doors to work in the opposite direction. They only go one way. But alright. Hello, how did you get here? 
Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Uh, yes. Do you want to know how to solve it? No, no. We actually find the blank, the black space between the doors be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? Yeah, see, it's got the cloudy stuff. I, I don't know. Um, actually, now that you mention it, I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. Don't think too hard about it. You'll see it again soon. I love the rotating heads. It's fantastic. I want to do that, but not with cubes. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. I'm gonna need another martini by the time this is over. And then we're just outside. Or are we? It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. End with a giant lamppost. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. I'm expecting a lot of dirty words. Oh, nice room, not. I don't think it's actually connected to the internet. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. I'm smart. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with That's me. That's a lot of notes. And I cooled off eventually. Whoa, holy shit. Yeah, exactly. Can you guys hear me? Fucking hell. Hello. Reasonable. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. So you say. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. In a world it's ironic, full of notes, that one man will read all of this them. game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Hey. 
Alright, how do I want to progress from here? Oh, I can't jump off. Let's go down that way. What the shit is this cavern? It's cool. Bor boring. I can assure you guaranteed that there's an acorn somewhere here in this place and that the sailors are looking for it. Okay. Wow. I like the lights off in the distance. Hey guys, just looking for someone to talk with. That is sad. I refuse to believe. <laughs> butt ass butt. I need to go to the freaking bathroom. Recognize me, please. There's nothing here. Go back. Did it change colors when I've read them? Oh. Don't listen to that guy. A free t-shirt. Makes game, includes door, cannot open door. Thanks. Open sesame. Door, how open? Need other side, door, why so? Someday I will meet the person who made this. I help people because of the internal good feeling I get. <gasps> so many words to read. New room. Oh, with cool art. You hear the chimes? They keep you going, don't they? I would like very much to be desired. Yeah, don't we all? It's not very crowded here. I'm scared of writing something. Don't want to feel judged. Can I write? Mm -hmm. Game where you leave notes and some suddenly everyone's a poet. Hey, don't bother. You can go in here, I think. Welcome, congratulations! I don't really know where to go with this. This is where I get off. I failed to write anything here. No, you didn't. I am compelled. Stop! Turn back! Proceeding for further will only result in misery. I want to see that art. Take my hand. Let's jump together. I really want to. But there's so many notes to read! <gasps> okay, I'm going to try to jump. Ah, yeah. Invisible wall. That's what I figured. Cabbage shapes our nation. What is that painting? I like it. I mean, it's just circles. On the other hand, something about the way that it's laid out, you're getting sort of a sense of depth, like you can sort of go through the middle. I don't know. I'm getting a real, really 3D feel from it. It's awesome. Does not matter if you ever get over there. Hey, don't talk about me that way. Very good game. Sounds like a Ludden Dare comment. I think this is not going anywhere. That one, too. Next time, I will do better. That one, three. I need someone to talk to. This is a note. Don't listen to the other notes. I'm not safe. Oh my god, there's so many notes. Ooh, the art, though. I want to read them all. How'd that get down there? Today I learned you cannot fall off. Ethical. person walking down there. There's no notes at all at the bottom level. Devil Tower Star. Oh my god, I gotta read everything! Well done. But Renee says issues. And if, like, the idea that the game creator left this note, you know? Painting, what does it mean? It's great, I want one of those in my living room. I know, it's just a bunch of circles, but it's appealing. Art. That thing looks messy from up close and perfect far away. It's sort of like a... What's that line from Clueless? She's a total... Monet? Something like that. You know, she looks good from distance, but up close it's a big old mess. From up here it looks just like dots. Cabbage shapes our nation again. Let's 
Stop pretending you are other people. <laughs> Another Devil Tower Star. It's two repeat messages. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. Maybe I'll feel real someday. secret. He kept it well. I beat the game! <gasps> My god, there's so many notes! More room? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. The whispering voices, very disconcerting. I wish there were notes in the real world. Yeah, I agree! Come one with the spiraling nonsense. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this Sounds dark like area a steam between coming. doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Spring is still going on. Typing? <laughs> I like that. All the people typing their notes. Are you here? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, 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 speak! Yeah. Porn stars okay, die too? this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Well over there. Oh, the door opened. Okay. Ooh. I think that's uh, ancient Gallifreyan. Who builds a house like this? There'd be so much dust up there. Oh my god. I'm in the well! See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. How do you and I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Uh... What furniture ought to go in the center of the room? How about a TV surround sound or refrigerator? Put a giant hole in the ground. Let's put a giant hole in the ground. That's not a giant hole. Okay, now what about along the wall of the room? Uh, 
Uh, ten stoves. There's no door either. I think we should light up this room a bit. Skylight, full ceiling window. Let's open this baby up. 10 by 12 recessed electric, six inch soft LED ceiling lights with fluorescent trim. But live Tesla coils in each corner. Yeah, I want a skylight. Table, you need a table. Well, I have a coffee table. Who are you? Where exactly are you doing this from? I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making any difference. Tables were invented in 1935. Pretty sure none of my choices are making any difference. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. No, I don't want to. No, I guess I have to. All right. Guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. First, click on this table. Good. Now go over to photo frame and turn it slightly. Now turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on again. So table, painting, floor lamp. Now go to the left side sofa, move it over slightly. Finally touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now be open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Table, photo, lamp, thingy, sofa. This is not going to help with the uh, the martini. And of course, now the table is gone, and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. Sit down. Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. So dark. There's the lamppost. Not really a hedge maze. How is this a version of the prison game? Creepy music. Very creepy. Hello? Who is this? Hey, it's me! I'm you from after you escaped the prison! You're me? Dot dot dot. So you were trapped in this prison too. It's a conversation. And so this is what Koda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Yes, I was in the reverse prison. That's where I am right now. 
Oh, I'm so glad to know that I get out eventually. What's it like to escape? Actually, I'm already forgetting what being in the prison was like. It's strange, but in a way, I kind of miss being in the prison. It feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Listen, I know this um, this game is supposed to be about an hour and a half long or so. Um, so we're at the 45-minute marker of this recording. So I'm going to go and put a cut in here. I'm going to get myself a refill. And when we come back, we're going to play some more. Most likely, I'm going through this slower than the average person because I'm, you know, reading and things. But, um... We'll see. This is interesting. I'm feeling kind of sad. But I don't really know why. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next episode. Get yourself a drink.